Hey guys, welcome to another session of Epic 7. This is my initial thoughts video for iKarina. Now, in terms of the real Espa girls, uh, obviously I think Karina is my favorite, but uh, in terms of like the visual look, it's definitely like a toss up between Giselle and Winter. But now with iKarina kind of out and this portrait shot of her and kind of seeing the S3 animation, I'm kind of like kind of split, you know, but I, I still think Giselle has the most sexy vibes going but winter is definitely really nice to look at um and the karina looks pretty good <laughs> uh still so uh poor ning ning poor ning ning <laughs> but i actually use ning ning the most out of all of the all of the esper girls ning ning is the the most used so uh we'll see anyways let's get into the stats so she is a uh, ice knight uh, assuming i was assuming a warrior but it's kind of nice to see a knight uh come into play again um I think the last night that we had was supposed to be a damage dealer as well with Summer Charlotte. And she didn't turn out to be super, super good. Although, like, some people have her built still. And maybe a niche pocket pick in World Arena. But then maybe for, like, Expos or something like that. Uh, but it looks like Karina is going to be that kind of role. It's going to be a, a high aggressive protection knight that has some kind of, like... I would say like I would compare it to be like a more like a Dilibet type of uh, if you think about it as a damage dealer not a cleanser um, she's an Ares Knight which this is uh, I think Fire Cecilia and also Lilius so Fire Lilius they're both Ares so this is not this is nothing new in terms of the stat line uh, I think notable stat lines of course is the health is pretty good to to boot uh, 6.7k health uh, speed at 110 is really really nice actually and the defense at uh, 648, not the highest in terms of a knight, so comparing to like a crowd, which is like 700. Uh, but she's a defense scaling bruiser. It's okay though, because like Dilibet, being even though she's a warrior, also defense scaling bruiser, has roughly around the same defense and uh, actually about the same HP as well. Um, so, in terms of like overall stat line, I think this is pretty solid. Uh, no extra crit rate, no extra crit damage, and there is some effectiveness, which I suppose has some value. I don't feel that for this particular kit is like the best. Um, but maybe someone would argue that maybe giving her some more effectiveness could be usable. But in my theory craft of what I think she's, how I think she's going to be used, I don't think that effectiveness matters too much. Uh, that's a, that, at least that's my opinion. Uh, imprint release and also imprint concentration also duly, you should note for sure. Because the imprint release being at 10% health is quite vital in terms of how I think that Karina will work in a World Arena draft. Which is technically counter aggro, so counter cleave. So if you're getting cleaved or you're getting uh, aggroed and you don't really have anything to like speed contest or anything like that, then you have to kind of go with a tank down bruiser method. But a lot of the bruisers or tanks are just too slow and so you need kind of like a... Uh, a passively or either punishable in terms of your opponent presses a button and you'll punish them so that's why sage ball is so good uh dilibet is useful or was more useful when ran and uh payro was more meta and uh, uh what else edward is is relatively good as well so again to to prevent your opponents from getting their master draft and she's gonna serve that kind of role but i'll definitely say that she's gonna be probably a bit difficult to use um, especially when we get to like the granular details of uh, how I think she might be played. But uh, regardless, uh, the imprint release being at 10% health is good because it can help protect the rest of your um, your hero. So your actual knight, the, the knight that you draft perhaps that has the damage mitigation in terms of the Aureus or like SCROL with Escort, uh, giving them more health because they're going to be absorbing some of that, some of that damage. Um, but the imprint concentration as well, being at 18% defense, assuming you get triple S of her, being able to flip the switch on those two, I think is very, very useful. Kind of had a similar thought for the Giselle in terms of like setting up for another damage dealer or for herself for the proper type of play. And I think for her case as well. Now, in terms of like just the value that you're getting out of the imprint itself, of course, is not as high as something like even Giselle's in, in, in Giselle's case. Or actually, let's use Roy Mustang. Um, obviously, another collab. But Roy Mustang has very, very high base attack. And so, therefore, like if you're pulling an attack imprint concentration for him, 
it feels like it's higher value whereas she is not the highest defense knight as i stated earlier so then that makes this kind of iffy right it's just like yes if you have the ability to get multiple imprints you're just increasing the gear score overall but you're not gonna get so much bang for buck out of it um frankly i think that in most of the cases you you most likely probably go with the imprint release or you know depending on the damage mods maybe the imprint concentration might be useful but i just say that overall imprint release imprint concentration pretty good but in terms of value not so good so i that's that's what i think about that anyways so skill three i'll blow you away so attacks the enemy by slamming them with a fist decreasing defense for two turns so this is a single target attack keep that in mind before increasing speed of the caster for two turns a, a successful attack so it can't miss will deal additional damage proportional to the caster's defense to all enemies uh damage dealt proportional uh increases proportional to the caster's defense so she can't necessarily like you know abuse it into someone that can evade or if she's blind or elemental disadvantage um just got to be careful of that because i think in their showcase um which i don't have a screenshot of how much damage she did i don't think it really matters um it uh it's a it's kind of like a risky move right so like basically you wouldn't necessarily want to hit like use her to hit like a green hero if the green hero is like the next threat or you know stuff like that so or or an evasion target like i said so there is decent stuff coming out of this but also kind of confusing stuff right so again i think her s2 uh when we talk about it will lend itself more to like she's gonna be counter pick material um uh, more for again against aggressive drafting against cleaving and so like like would the defense break on the target she's hitting do much and that's a question i have i'm not 100 percent sure i i know that i will add her to her overall damage but i'm just not sure if uh especially with her own artifact i'm just not sure if like that's like the best debuff um but i guess i can't think about another debuff that would be better i just feel like the s3 although on paper it seems like it's okay it's probably usable it is also very heavily reliant on the damage mods itself so maybe you don't kill the target she hits and I think that could be okay, but does the splash damage do enough damage to the rest, right? So like if you if you don't do enough damage, I think to the splash, then I think then she's kind of like a dead weight, you know. So that's that's why I feel like the the S three again. As I'm making this recording, there there has not been the data mine. Um, I think there's a maintenance coming up this week, uh, but we don't have the damage mods at the moment. So I would say. Uh, a lot of what I'm rating her as will be damage mod reliant, but like I said, I feel like her role will not be like, a, let's say an A Robby when A Robby was running rampant, um, because she doesn't have a lot of that self-sufficiency type of nature to her, which just questions her kind of longevity into like a standard fight, right? So like if you were thinking about a bruiser, like Shu is a lot better because Shu can self-heal. Um, and I guess unless your Karina's on lifesteal, I guess maybe you can heal a bit, but like Shu can self-heal, it has like innate, like you build her on counter and she can do so much damage and then she has so much protection, immunity buff, crit rate buff, and then if she's on snow crystal, even extra layer of protection there and so much combat readiness. So there's a lot of self-sufficiency in, in terms of Shu, right? Um, and then Karina doesn't really have that. So that's how I'm rating it, right? So like a, a bruiser that is meant to counter aggressive draft to kind of like you know slow them down um or your or you're a sustainy bruiser but she's not a sustainy bruiser so that makes it kind of confusing so the s3 uh definitely a very nice shot this is my favorite shot of course uh for obvious reasons it's because she has big eyes all right it's because she has big beautiful eyes all right big blue eyes and uh and it ends with like this fist going to the ground and and boom a lot of smoke kind of reminds me of kind of like roy mustangs kind of animation um but it's supposed to be this kind of like grand finish thing which is cool uh like compared to the other girls who are kind of like more how do you say more secluded in terms of like their their skill um the, she she goes like to uh pan out into a city and the city gets exploded and all that stuff so cool stuff so skill two this is the thing that kind of i think centralizes karina and it kind of puts the nail on the coffin so to speak in terms of her role 
um, when uh, when health of an ally except for the caster uh, after being attacked is 50% or less, increase the combat range of the caster by up to 50%, so skill enhance up to plus, uh, plus 5. 50% and activates leave it to me can only be activated once every three turns so leave it to me increases the defense of the cast for two turns and grants a barrier uh to all allies for two turns barrier strength proportion uh increases proportion of the cast's defense so there's a there's a couple things i think that uh small gate didn't have to uh how do you how do you say it I, I feel like this could be a bit more powerful and it would make karina a bit more hype because this already kind of limits her role, right? So the leave it to me is once every three turns. So this tells you again, it's kind of like Dilibet's like, you know, full focus cleanse. Um, it, it like her focus needs to stack, right? For Dilibet to, to get the defense buff again and to cleanse. And so Dilibet in terms of like in a standard fight, you would just never draft her. Like generally you wouldn't. Um, and Karina would have the same issue in terms of just how long this turn cycles because this is in and of itself a very useful skill, uh, but it doesn't, it's not, like it lends to like a counter aggro draft or, or you're using her in an aggro draft yourself. So basically uh, when she's in the fight, the idea is that there's not gonna be too many turns, all right? Whether you're the offensive or you're the defensive using Karina, when you're using her the idea is that there, there shouldn't be that many turns okay so i think i think that should be pretty clear um the 50 percent cr boost of course is really really big that's bigger than dillabed right so if you think about dillabed's 40 percent cr boost and she generally gets a turn quite a lot um what about a 50 percent and on top of the fact that she has 110 speed base uh so if she's on a speed set um i think no worries she's going to get her turn especially at a 50 percent cut um and she has an, an additional protection. So a lot of the uh, cleaves now and aggressive drafts have a lot of like, you know, well, I mean, it's been like this for a couple of seasons, but have a lot of like extra turns, right? Extra turns, a lot of cycling, and that's how aggro works. Just a lot of CR manipulation. And so let's say, for example, whether it's an AOE or whether it's a single target and they hit uh, someone, and their HP is 50% or less. Now you've got a barrier and you cut 50%. So you cut 50%, you most likely get the turn, but what if they have a like a secondary turn? They have a another turn, uh, but now you're protected by the barrier. Um, the issue again with this is, and this is where I think that Smilegate could have just been like, you know, if any ally um, was at 50% or less, this, this triggers. Because the thing is, 50% or less, while some may argue like, oh, that's pretty easy to achieve, sometimes it's not, right? Like, like what if they don't do enough damage when you need her to uh, proc, um, but they don't do enough to be at 50, and then the next turn, in terms of like the next hero that gets a turn, is the kill shot. And so you're, you're softened, but then you're not enough, um, so she doesn't get the turn. Uh, and so I feel like this in and of itself is not even that powerful. So why make it so that exclusive to your allies getting attacked, right? Maybe the idea is that, oh, then, then people will have to focus on Kar uh, Ikarina and therefore she doesn't trigger her passive. And so they waste a lot of skills into her. I don't know if that makes any sense either. Um, I just feel like while, again, we see it in skill three, it's in skill two, it's like it has some potential it's like it's almost there but i feel like my idea there would be like her about her buff like if it were to buff her like the first step of a buff would be something like that um and maybe maybe not at 50 percent so it's, yeah it's either 50 percent you you either already got one shot or like you're not at 50 percent yet your ally is not at 50 percent yet and then the next turn that your opponent goes they get the kill shot so in terms of like something like Dilibet, right? Dilibet would be like they will hold their debuffing skills, or they'll give them too give Dilibet too many debuffs so that she can't cycle back on her second round of the of the cleanse and push, right? So like there are ways to like manipulate Dilibet outside of like Dilibet's even Dilibet's mechanic. Um, how much more so if it was like Icarina? Um, because again, they could pivot or they could uh you know, land a, land a hit into pit stop into Karina herself so she doesn't proc the CR boost. Um, and so, so yeah. 
Uh, yeah, that's 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 pretty much it for for this one. But again, activated only once every three turns, and giving a CR boosting seems very aggressive. The berry is nice to protect for that second turn if they have it, but and again, this just leaves a lot of questions. Is it going to be very 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 useful? Um, as you can see here, this triggers. Now, I I am pretty sure the leave it to me is a skill. So if it this procs, it does proc Politus, proc Celine, even procs Winter, I believe. Um, so I I do think it's a skill, so it should proc it. Um, but this is just a screenshot of what that looks like, right? So the defense buff is very nice. So I think the idea is like, yeah, you you draft with some like knights and bruisers. And your opponent is cleaving you or something. And when they get to about 50% health, Karina, boom, cuts 50%. So ideally gets the turn and is defense buff now ready to do her S3 so that she can do damage to all the opponents, right? Skilled off damage. In the showcase video, they showed it where it was kind of like a Sez Bomb. It was kind of like a an LQC S3 on a Dark Elemental Hero. It has the AoE pop, right? Um, again, damage mods will need to be available for us to really assess like how how like how how threatening it is, right? So like what what if she gets a turn but without the CR boost, without leave it to me. Without the defense buff at all, then does that is that damage enough to even kill squishies? Right, that's that's the question. I think um, it, it, can she kill squishies? Can she kill the aggressive draft or the cleave draft? And I think that in and of itself will give her more value. And if she can't do it, then then I think this hero does not really look that good. Um, skill one exposed. So attacks an enemy with a fist, also a single target, up to a seventy five percent chance. So if you plus three mola. Uh, to decrease the defense for one turn. Um, so one turn defense break, and Yufin, who is getting buffed uh, in the in this coming balance patch this this week, has a two turn defense break on the S one. Um, although it's a fifty percent chance to proc, this for a one turn, I don't know. It just feels kind of it feels kind of bad. And also another thing, actually, when I talked about the the balance patch, this rely on the CR boost, um, but she can't cleanse it or anything like that. Um, is susceptible to something like ML Elena, who has Soulburn Ignore Resist and Restrict, and will most likely be used in an aggressive draft, which is what Karina is supposed to counter. And also Briar Witch has Soulburn and Unbuffable and Strip. And so if you if you Soulburn Unbuffable and Strip, then you also don't get the barrier, you don't get the defense buff. And so I feel like just in just those three alone, um, to compare like uh, ML Lena, Briar Witch of Syria, and uh, Yufin, uh, and then someone, uh, actually two people on my YouTube uh, comments left a, oh, I missed something, that uh, Yufin's really good with Zeo. Actually, that's very true. Um, and so aggressive draft with Yufin with Zeo is going to be really really nuts. And is is this is this enough? Um, Zeo relatively does about forty percent damage too. So you can't even proc Karina. Um, so this this is only okay. So I'm only bringing this stuff up because like again we would want to rate the heroes as they're released as they're being exposed to the current meta, right? If anything, I feel like. Again, uh, I, I don't I don't mean to m be offensive, but I, I feel like Smogit is kind of like showing their cards in terms of their balance patch team and their character development team are not very aligned. Uh, they're not very aligned, and and, and I made that comment before when when we were talking about the Hua Yang nerf and then their Runka release, and uh, I was talking about how it just like th th it feels like there's there's a there's a lot of teams, talented teams, devs. But they're not aligned, and I feel like there should be someone, a game designer, that they should hire that really makes sure that these things are kind of neat and tidy. I just do feel that Karina's release with the new balance patch kind of in light makes Karina already look like worse than she is, um, which is kind of uh, disappointing. Soul Burning has an increased effect of 100% to get the defense break, but for two turns. So that's very good, but again, if Karina, if I'm right and Karina's S2 is talking about going into aggressive draft, going into cleave, is it necessary for that skill to even exist in terms of this soul burn? I feel like this soul burn has very low value because they're either dead or you're dead, like the game's over. Um, and then would the defense break 
the two turn defense break at 100% chance would that even be necessary I would almost feel like I would have wanted to see like the sober and do extra damage on the s3 or something like that um or something more more uh, like high, like more, more utility in it um so that maybe you can use her in an aggressive draft like a like a Karina Cleave Right, like maybe a soul burn something, maybe even a cost 20 still to do something, an extra turn or any anything like that. Um, although when I say the extra turn thing, trust me, I, I'm very, very sick of extra turn and also ignore effect resist stuff. So it's not that I want it. I'm just saying that I feel that this is a, kind of a low value one. Again, I don't, I just, my, my issue is that I don't see Karina in like a A Ravi, a Lensia shoe type of role where they're gonna kind of sustain the fight and be very very useful throughout yes I think an s1 with her rocket punch like artifact and depending on the damage mod again can be insane right defense break pop 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 you got a bit of like a mini Hua Yang kind of but a defense scaling Hua Yang so there's a possibility of that um but again like Hua Yang's like survival when she was at tip top shape was just like always there right and Karina's passive still relies on every three turns so uh, I took a couple of screenshots here I know there's a lot of punchy punch characters in the game but I just like the frames here uh, and in and, and the punch animation I, I feel like it's it makes Karina look really really sexy very cool uh, and also it's just the the pump 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 punch I, I feel like that was really satisfying um, so I wanted to take uh, these uh, <laughs> these slides of it. I generally don't do like a frame by frame thing, but I just felt that the S1 was actually kind of interesting. And is then now we get to the artifact. So rocket punch gauntlet. Um, after attacking with a single attack, let's look at the max version. Of course, has a 100% chance to inflict additional damage to the target. Uh, additional damage increases proportion to the caster's defense. Now I feel that uh, if Karina does kind of become underwhelming especially in the light of the the new upcoming meta then the artifact might be the better pull compared to her as a hero um because in the future and even currently we do already have knights that are defense scaling that are single target and maybe this does really become useful one day for like let's say f maya f clary is also a defense scaling bruise or sorry defense scaling knight but has t crazy turn cycling so like can we see that come to play i don't know though but i feel like if we're looking at uberius tooth and uberius tooth's value went like skyrocketed up when wayang became meta maybe there's a future knight that has that similar effect um uh, even though it has to be defense scaling, so I think that is something that we do have to keep in mind. Uh, defense scaling, but the single target, like, could this be, like, usable um, for multiple knights, right? And so, you know, by the time that that said knight is released, will we be kind of chasing, oh man, we wish, I wish I had a rocket punch gauntlet at max limit broken, kind of like when a lot of people didn't have a max Ubiris tooth for Hua Yang. Um, so uh, outside of that though, it might be her best in slot, um, but we'll have to see. And uh, and that does it for the Espa collab. I think overall though, for them to come out with four heroes, all kind of unique. Winter being super good as a reactionary pick for those who are using uh, non-attack skills, too much support, too much healer. Winter is just a huge, huge punishing character. Ning Ning, very cool. I still really like her a lot. Um, I know she's not like meta, but uh, you know, AoE strip with the barrier inversion and then CR boost attack buff um, and all that kind of jazz. I think that Ning Ning was kind of cool as well. Giselle, unfortunately, I think on paper as a damage dealer, I think she should be fine. But like I said in the initial thoughts, Giselle was difficult to draft because like she doesn't have any survival. Um, and then we have someone like Sez, who is also being buffed, who has survival, kind of like Roy, and he might be a huge damage dealer uh, incoming for aggressive drafts, and Giselle didn't make the cut there, unfortunately. And then we have Karina, who is also looking like some kind of responsive hero, 
but not something so defined as winter right like winter procs and then resets and then she's always in stealth so winter has like a lot of protection a lot of value and then karina has all these kind of things where you can kind of work around her passive as i explained when i was talking about the s2 so only time will tell if she's going to be very good but i think that uh, you know for collection purposes you should definitely try to go for her i personally think that we need more we need more counter picks for those who can't speed contest or who can't play aggro versus an aggro player or a cleave player i do feel like karina is a much needed tool in your arsenal it's just that i'm not quite sure they nailed it in terms of the kit but i feel like that was where they were going so so i'll get i think i feel like they're like well like 90 percent there just need a 10 percent touch up and then she would be insane just like how dilibet um was like like really, really hard to use and then they they tuned it where it's like it was really perfect for a couple matchups and i feel like karina needs that anyways that's my thought for uh, i karina uh, thoughts for Icarina. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. And uh, maybe maybe you're thinking like, hey, maybe she could just be a knight with Aureus and has some kind of protection. Um, let me know. I love to read it. And I'm just going to end this for the video recording. If you guys have Discord, check out the Discord server. Subscribe to YouTube if you haven't. And, I get, and all, as always, thank you guys for watching. And I'll see you guys next time.